uh, fresh tracks and frosty grooves, and we're talking about, of course, snowmobiling industry. And we've got a really special guest with us here tonight, uh, Clyde Seeley, the, uh, boy, he's Mr. Snowmobile of uh, West Yellowstone, and that really means something when you're Mr. Snowmobile of the snowmobile capital of the world. So um, Clyde's going to be telling us a little bit about, uh, about his adventures here, and just as a brief introduction, let me tell you this. Clyde Seeley began working at the Three Bears Lodge in West Yellowstone at age 19. He met his wife there, and they married in 1962. In 1970, they purchased the lodge. Back in 1970, about 500 people lived in West Yellowstone, and the winter number in the winter that number dropped still further. West Yellowstone was a summer town for tourists visiting Yellowstone National Park and was mostly closed down for the winter. Only one hotel was open. All that began to change in 1971 when Clyde packaged the first winter trips into the park using snowmobiles. He started out with 15 machines and personally flew out to Minneapolis to encourage visitors to come out and see Yellowstone in a way that they had never seen it before. For the next 40 years, Clyde worked to make West Yellowstone the snowmobiling capital of the world. He made more than 10 hotels offer accommodations for winter tourists, as well as Clyde's, who's still over there at the Three Bears. And his touring business, Yellowstone Elephant Guides, remains one of the top draws to West Yellowstone in the winter. And tonight he's here to tell us a little bit about his own story as reflected in his new book, which will be available in the lobby. So, Clyde, come on that. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm, am I on and live? Sound? Sound okay? You hear up there? Okay. I realize I'm just the warm up act for what comes a little bit later. <clears throat> so I'll try and not bore you too much. How many of you have heard of seeing Yellowstone in the wintertime by the raise of hands? How many of you have been to Yellowstone in the wintertime? I'm impressed. If I had asked, someone had asked that question in 1958, before I came to West Yellowstone, I would imagine there would not be one hand that would go up. I've been asked to come tonight and talk about my involvement with snowmobiles and snow coaches in Yellowstone National Park and in West Yellowstone. Um, this is where I grew up, on a little farm three miles east of St. Anthony. Life was kind of hard then, and we didn't have a lot of money. And so at the age of 19, I came and worked at Three Bear Lodge, as was mentioned, as a laundry boy. And then I left for a couple of years to England, came back, got married, uh, finished school, and took my wife up to meet my former boss. And they asked us if we would come back and work for them again, which we did. And I've been uh, there uh, with a love affair of Yellowstone and West Yellowstone for now for over 58 years. A couple of years ago, I began to write down some of my memories of my farm boy days and uh, some of the um, events that have taken place in West Yellowstone regarding snowmobiles and others, other things. And how to, I became a successful businessman and an advocate for West Yellowstone. So I wrote down the, uh, those memories into my little autobiography here. Uh, it tells about growing up on the farm, first of all. Life on the farm was not easy. I had my friends lived in town, and they didn't have to do the chores morning and night, and they didn't have to work on the farm all day long. And I began to become fairly envious of them. But I tell you now, I would not trade my life for all the world for theirs. Uh, there's a little delay on this thing, so you'll have to bear with me. But on January 2nd, 1970, um, opportunity knocked for me. 
when the Wilsons offered to sell us Three Bear Lodge uh, to a couple of little kids, basically, with very little money, they made it possible for us to buy into the lodge without uh, a huge down payment. So I came home from teaching school, was teaching in the wintertime, managing the motel in the summer, came home from teaching school at two o'clock, or excuse me, at noon, put the papers back in the mail to, to buy the place, and went back to teach school. At two o'clock they called and said the motel was on fire. <laughs> what do you do? So I ran home, and sure enough, it was burning. The back of the motel was burning. So I quit teaching school, and my wife finished out the balance of the year while I rebuilt the motel. Um, going back a little bit before that, it was in 1955 when Harold Young took these two snow coaches uh, under special permit from the Park Service to, to go into Old Faithful. Now you can imagine what the winter keeper shoveling snow might have thought as they saw these two metal bugs coming, motorized metal bugs, uh, look like stink bugs, don't they? Uh, coming into the park. Well, this was my first snowmobile. It was fun. <laughs> it would go 20 miles an hour. And if I hold the throttle right next to the, the handlebar I c and go across the drift, I could get some air a couple of feet. And then I built a little homemade color-coordinated uh, pull-behind sled for my daughter and my wife. It became a family affair. Well, I decided that uh, we'd have to go back, that uh, we had decided then to keep the motel open in the wintertime. So I took a couple of eight by 10 photos, hopped on a plane, flew back to Minneapolis, and started cold calling on travel agencies and snowmobile clubs and telling them, you just gotta come and see this place. And they did. So this is one of the first groups that came and I loved to take them and hurry and go around the corner. That, you know, all those people with one guide, Clyde the guide. Um, I loved to go around the corner and stop and look at their faces and listen to the oohs and the ahs as they came into view of these spectacular places. They came to see it for the first time and I'm inviting you to come and see it for the first time if you have not already done so. Then we wanted to build their operation, so I contacted KSL Television out of Salt Lake City. They came up and interviewed us here a uh, long time ago, obviously. <laughs> and uh, uh, it uh, became very successful. We started filling up, and so I told my neighbor, the whole town closed down prior to that time, right? So I told my neighbor, you ought to stay open and get some snowmobiles to rent. And they did. And then another neighbor, and another neighbor, and another neighbor, and pretty soon the whole town was thriving with a winter, with a winter business. And there were 10 new hotels that were built. But, it began to be too much. There was over, uh, well, there were over, we were overusing the resources in the park, and so there, we began to realize that something needed to change. And so on our Christmas birthday, our Christmas party, December 16th, 2000, we had, we just finished building the Holiday Inn and we had 200 employees and their families there. And just before the uh, dinner started, someone came to me and told me that as of tomorrow, now the park was supposed to open the next day, December 16th, 17th. As of tomorrow, Judge Sullivan has banned snowmobiles from the park. Now I didn't, spoil the evening. 
And we went through the rest of the evening. And then at the end, I had to tell all of our employees that as of tomorrow, there would be no snowmobiles going into Yellowstone. And there was a calm and stillness that came over the whole group. You could have heard a tin pin drop as they began to wonder, what's going to happen to me and my family? What's going to happen if they ban snowmobiles? So this was the question. After the ban, what? The idea was to switch over from snowmobiles to snow coaches. And no more, snowmo no more snowmobiles. Well, just to quickly point out, what had happened when I started the, the snowmobile, this is where we were in 1971. There was a couple thousand people who would go in. 15 years later, notice where it went, and clear over to 2000, when they banned snowmobiles, there were 57,000 snowmobile visitors that were going in and enjoying Yellowstone. And the next day, we couldn't take them in. Now, there were, never was really a total ban because of the things that a number of us did. But eventually, uh, then uh, four years later, it had dropped clear down to here. And this is where it is today, or last year. <clears throat> so Don Berry came, who was the Assistant Secretary of the Interior, of the Interior came in to speak to the Greater Yellowstone Coalition and said, that we are going to get snowmobiles out of Yellowstone. Well, that didn't, you know, they pretty worried us for a lot. So we met with Don and asked him if we could meet with him the next day. So he came and um, we had these two snowmobiles. Now I might say that if it wasn't for this snowmobile right here, we would not be here tonight talking about snowmobiles in Yellowstone. This was the four-stroke snowmobile that just came out. So we had it, and this is a two-stroke. You can hardly tell the difference between the looks, but we had uh, them set up across the street. So I asked Don if he would come with me, and uh, we would go across the street for a little demonstration. So. We had both snowmobiles behind us, and we had them start the two-stroke. That's the one on the right. And we walked, and I said, well, Don, you tell me when you can't hear it anymore. We walked, and we walked, and we walked, and finally he said, I don't hear it anymore. Then we turned around, okay, walked back to, turn around again and shut that one off and started the next one. He said, okay, let's do the same thing. So you can't hear it anymore. We walked, we walked. He said, I can't hear it anymore. About a third of the way. Now sound and emissions were the biggest problem that the park was concerned about. And so that was obvious what impact that the new four-stroke snowmobile, and this was the first one, would have on the industry. Uh, then one day, we had a discussion. We made an, quite an impression on Don. And one day, uh, I called him, or I received a, a telephone call from him. And he said, I wanted you to know you are the third person that I've told, but I'm, retire, I, I'm resigning from my position as Assistant Secretary of Interior. And I wanted you to know you're the third person well, I was pretty impressed to know that. Then I was back doing some uh, DC work with hearings of the Senate and in the House and committees, and it was t and it was his birthday or his retirement party. So Don asked if we would come, me and my buddy. So I went, and, and this is in a lavish office now. The Secretary of Interior is in kind of an L shape. Ryan Zinke is probably going to be in that office, maybe today, I hear, is going to be confirmed as the Secretary of Interior. Anyway, he was, Don was uh, being roasted by all of his 50 or 60 cohorts that were there with him, and then he started to give his talk. 
And of course, the phone rang and I had to go in the other room. Somebody came running in and said, Clyde, get in here. He's talking about you. So I went back in the room and he told me what it's, my friend told me what he had said in the meantime. He said, of all, I thank all of you for coming. But the person that I appreciate most being here tonight is Clyde Sealing, who has come from West Yellowstone. We have been on the opposite side of this um, situation, but we're still friends. So I went up to him afterwards when I got back in the room and I shook his hand and said, I understand you said some pretty nice things. And he said, I, yes. And, but he said, I want you to know that I have embedded language into these documents that she should protect you as far as snowmobiles are concerned. Well, I thought that was great, but things did not improve. Uh, we're gonna skip some of these things. Or we're, I don't wanna hold you up. <laughs> In the meantime, we had another fire at Three Bear Lodge except this was a doozy. And we ended up having to tear down uh, and rebuild Three Bear. This was the end result. Pretty nice, huh? <laughs> Compared to what it was. Um, then in 2013, the Park Service finally came up with a plan that was fairly balanced and that uh, they agreed that there was uh, no problem with having both snowmobiles and snow coaches in the park. We're going to issue 10-year uh, contracts in order to do that. So they sent out the prospectus. Those, who wanted, those operators that wanted to bid on that, make their uh, proposal, could do so. So we submitted our proposal from Three Bear Lodge. It's a very long, laborious, expensive process. Um, and guess what? If we didn't have a contract, we would not be able to have snowmo take snowmobiles or snow coaches into the park from Three Bear Lodge again. And guess what? We didn't get a contract. After 40 years, we had been taking people into the park on snowmobiles and snow coaches, and now we could not anymore. So now, they say necessity is the mother of invention. And we, we had a situation that uh, we had to do something. So Yellowstone Alpen guys ended up getting two contracts, and we ended up buying that operation. Now, contracts are not supposed to be, have any value but when we bought that operation, we ended up paying over a half a million dollars more than what the business was worth for those contracts. No value? <laughs> well, Yellowstone is changing. Uh, even the natural features change. And so, so is the machinery, the technology in the is improving with snow coaches and snowmobiles, and we've been kind of at the leading edge of helping that change take place. I prefer myself the vehicles with skis, and so on our Sea Yellowstone operation, we have some with skis and tracks. Um, the new craze, as you've probably seen, are the uh, Low pressure tire, big tires, they stand this tall. Now that's supposed to be the cat's meow. That's the new craze. So we've built one just to experiment and have it with the rest of our fleet. Well, I wanted to keep the old concept. There's something about history that intrigues me. And so Zantera was selling out all of their bombardiers, these yellow bombardiers, and were converting to the low pressure tires and to other vehicles. And so we bought this old relic out of the bone pile, so to speak. 
And here's what happened. You know how you take an old rod and take it in the shop and work it and make it look beautiful and new again? <laughs> Voila. <laughs> With these new motors, the new motors that, uh, and the sound deadening that we've put into these vehicles, they are now and have been some of the quietest, believe it or not, and most energy efficient snow coaches that there are in the park. Now, the low pressure tires, of course, rivals that a little bit. So in review, this was Three Bear Lodge in 1970 when we bought it. This is Three Bear Lodge today with 15 snow coaches of various kinds and 90 plus snowmobiles that we can take either into the park or out of the park. The two strokes still mainly go out and they are the big high lug machines that uh, go climb through powder and to the top of the highest hill. That was the first snowmobile that we had for rent. We had 15 of those. Notice how much clearance there is here. <laughs> about six inches clearance between the running board there and here. That's the machine we run in today. <laughs> Notice the difference in the clearance? So you can really get stuck, and we did with the, <laughs> the old scorpions. You don't get stuck, you better not get stuck with that anymore. <laughs> then this is the current four-stroke snowmobile. So what a difference. Um, so that's where we are today. Now I'd like to end this with a little commercial. You know, how you have to do this. It's the price you have to pay for coming tonight. <laughs> Opportunity knocked. My, the little book that I've written. Be happy to sign it for any of you, uh, if you so choose. Thank you for coming. Uh, come and see us. You'd love it. Thank you.